This Week in Connecticut with Dennis House starts now. Welcome to This Week in Connecticut. Greetings, everyone. I'm Dennis House. From $5 a gallon gas to 5% mortgages, people are complaining about inflation. Also, Juneteenth is here. We'll discuss that. And you know what else is almost here? Hamilton is coming back to Connecticut. And it's Father's Day. Gas prices hitting record highs and the cost of diesel hitting small businesses hard. Still the lowest in the region, but it's still a hit. That's why we got the biggest tax cut in history to make life a little more affordable for people. But as families struggle with inflation, is the U.S. headed for a recession? I think people need to stay within their means and trim their expenses. But I am actually very optimistic about our future. Learning from our past while coming together for a better future. I know if we all work together, we'll have, we'll have a better community, a better state, a better world. We're recognizing the importance of Juneteenth as it becomes a state holiday. Could the summer of 2022 be a return to normal? One of Broadway's biggest shows is coming to Connecticut. A preview from the Bushnell in Hartford. It's the fondness, the love, the um, relationship that this building and, and all of the shows and activities happen here have with this community. And our positive vibes, celebrating dads, inside a special ceremony this week to show just how important fathers are in a child's life. I don't really say foster really anymore. I just, you know, say dad, you know, dad, mom. First up on this week, the lead. It seems everything costs more these days from gasoline to borrowing money. Inflation is hurting Americans, especially as people are in the mood to spend and have some fun after the long pandemic. We'll discuss that in a moment, but first, News 8's Mike Mascadrelli and what we're all going through. Yeah, between a bearish stock market, rising interest rates, and uh, more expensive goods, consumers are being hit really hard right now, financial anxiety becoming a real thing for many people. Whether it's paying for groceries or filling up at the pump, you're losing money from inflation. At 8.6%, it's the highest it's been in 40 years. Do you have any financial anxiety right now? All the time. I really do. It's terrible. The economy and one's mental health are typically closely connected, says this psychologist from VA Connecticut. The money is connected to goals, and when they think about inflation, inflation or uh, a, a rough economy, they, that puts these goals in jeopardy. I have four kids, so the food shopping, gas prices, getting them back and forth to school, that's definitely a little bit of a struggle there. To compensate Jen Quinn, a mother of four is now resorting to bargain hunting with inflation affecting most sectors. Food, energy, and rent, the most notable increasing. The Fed's recent interest rate hikes means higher mortgage rates, making purchasing homes even harder. A 30-year fix is now well over 6%. In order to solve the inflation problem, you know, interest rates have to go up. There's just too much money chasing too few goods. McCabe says the market drop is now setting in for clients feeling financially stressed. Now they're getting really nervous. People are looking at their 401ks that they've saved for the, you know, for 40 plus years, their whole life, and they've seen a 20% drop in their retirement account that they're planning on living on for the rest of their lives. McCabe said bear markets are normal and tend to be short-lived. The average length is about nine months. Cutting back on expenses and budgeting are good steps to take in this economy. According to the latest Stress in America survey, 87% of Americans said inflation is what's driving their stress. In Glastonbury, Mike Mascadrelli, News 8. To provide some insight into what is happening right now, we are joined by Matthew Carbray of Ridgeline Partners, a financial expert who often dispenses advice and wisdom here on This Week in Connecticut, and from Quinnipiac University, Professor of International Business, Mohammed Elahi. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being with us here today. And I'll start with you, Professor. What exactly are we in right now? Is it a recession? We are going through a challenging phase, but I don't think we are going through any recession. Uh, when we have two consecutive quarters of negative growth, then it is considered a recession and our economy grew in the first quarter. This quarter, it might be somewhat flat, and we wouldn't know until December whether we are in a recession or not. And Matt, are your clients nervous? Oh, surely. I mean, if you look at all the headline news with gas prices, inflation, 
trips to the supermarket and understanding what costs are relative to what they were just a short time prior and the stock market. So I think everybody is very much so nervous given the current environment. So you've got a lot of clients who obviously, like many of us, are spending twice as much on gasoline these sure. days than we were a couple of years ago. What do you tell them? Because they're wondering if they should crack into savings to take some more money out or stop doing certain things? Yeah, and I think there's never a bad time to do some budgeting, to take some inventory and to better understand what it is that you spend and what you spend it on. I think a lot of us during a COVID environment had a lot of things that maybe they were spending out of convenience, Netflix memberships, things that you may not necessarily need anymore. So as a way to counteract those higher costs, think about things that you may be able to trim to improve your household cash flow. So Professor, we've seen interest rates go up and rates like in other rates, car loans, cars are more expensive. What are you looking at for the next couple of months, do you think? I think next couple of months is going to be challenging for everybody across the board. It's a time for a belt tightening. I actually completely agree with Matthew. I think people need to stay within their means and trim their expenses. But I am actually very optimistic about our future because our inflation has been going off the roof. It was just so high and the Fed needed to do something to tame the inflation. I think some short-term pain in the form of slower economic uh, growth may be a better uh, solution than sustained inflation. But this is not as bad as 2008, of course. Yeah, this is not the same environment as 2008 and 2009. If you think about unemployment at that point at its height, it was two to three times what it is now. We have an unemployment rating of 3.6%, which is incredibly low. So the things that drove our market into recession back then were the real estate market, the, the financial institutions behaving badly, and the amount of bad debt that was out there. So we got some different factors at play here, but I agree with the professor in saying that you can't compare two recessions to each other, and this one doesn't feel uh, like it's going to be the magnitude of what we experienced, and ideally it won't extend as long as the prior. So what kind of control do politicians and those in charge of the banks have over this, Professor? Actually, I think our politicians are trying to uh, have some control, but there are certain forces that are beyond the control of any politician or policymakers. For example, there is a mismatch between demand and supply. And this mismatch, and especially the supply crunch, has been caused by a variety of factors, including the persistence of COVID-19, the uncertainty resulting from the war in Ukraine. And politicians are taking some steps to mitigate the negative uh, impact, the fallout from these uncertainties. But I don't think they can completely control these events which are global in nature and happening outside the US. You know, Matt, a couple months ago, you were talking about mortgage rates were low, people were selling their houses, making big profits. Sure. And it was, it was sort of a seller's market out there. And they're also worried about their 401ks now. What are you telling your people? Yeah, well, the real estate market has just blown up. And a lot of that has to do with supply and demand imbalances in which there's so much demand, there's very limited supply. If you think about new home starts, it was down 5.5% based on a reading today. So it speaks to the supply and demand kind of imbalance that is not just in real estate, it's in a lot of other different areas as the professor alluded to. But we're telling people that if you have an account that is set up for retirement, and even if retirement is in the very short future, you're not retiring all in one day or one year for that matter. So you need to remember that this is money that's intended for a lifetime and that ideally you have different buckets that you've established so that you can draw down from the buckets that have been least impacted during these periods, allowing your other more market driven type investments to stay invested. So you studied economics for some time, Professor. Does this remind you at all of the 1970s when we had those whip inflation now campaigns and prices were soaring and the mortgage rates were high? Sometimes I'm worried that we might experience 1970 style stagflation. Stagflation. There will be high inflation and low economic growth. But there are so many factors, it's difficult to predict what it would be. But I also believe that our policymakers have learned a lot from the past. And I think that by the end of third quarter, our economy will again be sailing smoothly, despite the headwinds that we are experiencing right now. Matt, do you see any businesses sort of growing in the next couple of months where you might encourage people to invest in them? You know, the one thing that I say to people is, you try and counteract some of the things that you're dealing with. So people have been dealing with rising energy prices. Is there a way that your portfolio could be positioned in a way to take advantage of that? Um, I don't know if there's any businesses specifically that are set to just take off, 
but I do think that you will start to see some stability. We're gonna have to feel some pain. The Federal Reserve came out and had a record increase of 75 basis points or three quarters of 1%. And that is painful, and there's more of that ahead. But unless we do that, that's the only way that we can really trim and, and taper inflation. We thank you for your insight. Matthew Carberry from Ridgeline Partners and Mohammed Elahi from Quinnipiac University. Thank you gentlemen for being here with us today. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you for having us. It is one of Broadway's most popular shows and it's coming to Connecticut. A preview of Hamilton ahead of its premiere at the Bushnell next week. And understanding the history of the Juneteenth holiday. We'll speak to the president of the Urban League of Greater Hartford when we come back.